Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is a fold flat baby bib box. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and as you can see, it's very much a baby theme on here. And when you open it, I'm just gonna pull the bib out. You see it fits a bit. And put my nails under there. It folds completely flat. So you could make a watch of these and store them all completely flat. And I love it. It's cute. I haven't made a fold flat box for a while. So I'm just going to put that back together. I'm going to hang on to that bib. Um, this is one of my children's bibs. And it's the one that was probably the least stained and rather cute. So, But it fits in there with no problem. And it's it's a standard bib. Just a standard size bib that you can pick up anywhere. So I'm going to show you how to make this. Okay, you need a piece of cardstock that is 8 and a quarter by 10 inches. Oh, my cardstock stuck under my big shot. There we go. Eight and a quarter by ten inches. This one was smoky. No, it wasn't. It was soft sky. This one is pink pirouette. So eight and a quarter by ten inches or 21 by 25 and a half centimetres. On the long side, the first score line comes at half an inch, which is over here. And then score it at two and a half. And I will give you the metric in a second. Seven and a half and nine and a half inches and in metric that is one and a half centimetres, six and a half, nineteen and twenty-four. Then you turn it round and score it at two, four, six and eight inches which is five, ten, fifteen and twenty centimetres. Now don't worry about writing them down everything is in the description bar which is just below so if you click that open you will find a direct link to this project right there it's not just a random link to my blog it's specifically to this project okay hold and burnish your score lines Okay, so the piece is to remove because obviously we want to get a flat part. So as you can see, there's only three tops to it. When you look at your piece of cardstock, you've got a very thin, skinny section. That is where we're going to keep this square and the one above it. And the same on the opposite side. So we'll work off the bottom first. So we're going to keep the big square and the skinny next um, by it, but lose all of that part. So we'll do that on both sides. Okay, so that part is creating that bit and the same that's on the opposite end. So we're going to cut straight down parallel to it. So this has now become loose and this is going to be one of these side panels here. So cut into it a little bit, not too much. And the same there. Okay, so that's a side flap, and you just hack off a bit. This one that's next to that, we don't need at all because that will actually fold around. When you fold the box round, that's going to be that that was there originally. So this is a mirror image of that one, so we've cut into it slightly. And hacked off a bit, and then this one just cut away. And I will fold it up in a second and show you exactly what I mean. So when it folds round, those two fold in, and that folds over. So you repeat the same on this side. Okay, so straight down here, back in a little bit. Get rid of that one and chop off a bit there and there. Okay, don't need any of those bits. 
So that's how the box is all going to fold. We need to round these corners just to make life easier when you put those. So this is the Project Life Corner Rounder. And every now and again somebody will say to me, is it different to our old one that retired over a year ago? Yes, it's got a deeper arc, so you get a more rounded part. Okay, now before I put the um, uh, designer series paper on, I want to stick it down. I only have sticky strip. There is a new terrible tape coming. I haven't got it yet, so I'm going to work with sticky strip. But you work with the adhesive of your choice. And I'm working with that because this is a super thin, tiny little bit to stick my adhesive to. Really tiny. And I know that if I used Fuse, I'd be wibbling all over the place and I'd probably stick it and me to the table. Okay. There we go. So we can fold up the box now. So this one, I think, yeah, I'm going to make that my front. So I've got a little handy little bit there just to help you open it easier. And that, I used to use the small oval punch. I haven't got that anymore. That's just retired. So the little half inch punch, that does just as good a job. Actually, I need to put the DSP on first. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? Okay, piece of designer series paper that measures four and three quarters by eight and a half or 12 by 22 centimetres. And we're just going to wrap that round. Close it up for a second so it doesn't squish. I've gone with the something borrowed paper, although it's you know weddingy. Um, I reckon it was quite good for baby. So I'm just gently running my fingers down, the, just roughly to create score lines. I'm just going to reinforce these now. Not everything in life has to be measured. This is how I would really work. I don't always measure everything. Okay, so that will fit nicely around here now. Just looking to the back. And meet up there. So I'm going to run a little bit of snail along this part. Now, this box is going to slide, the, this part is going to go up and down. I didn't like that, so I'm going to show you what I did on this one to stop it doing that. I grabbed my paper piercer, one single solitary glue dot on the front or the back, doesn't matter which. And I've just popped it underneath. And that stops it moving about. It's not going to slide anymore. Marvellous. Okay. So this was the front, I decided, at the top. So now, get your half inch circle punch in the middle. And, oh, that was a bit deep. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. And that just means it'll be easier to open and close. Okay, final bit of stuff. We're going to do some stamping and some big shot work. So I have got my beautiful something for baby stamp set and the matching framelits baby's first framelits all go with this so you can even cut out your beautiful pram with the framelit or the tie or the uh, nappy pin whatever but I'm going to go with the duck and to complement the, the lovely pink pair I've got rose red but it was a bit different so I've got it already prepped on my block And let me move all this out of the way and bring in the big shot. Oh, I don't think I can get it on. Oh, you're going to have to trust me for a second. But I'm doing big shot work off this camera to the left. There's my little duck. I can get this bit out. So I've got a magnetic plate, clear plate, duck. And this is where the magnetic plate really comes in, into its own because you can get perfect alignment. Clear plate on top. Give me a second, it's going <laughs> to... Just off camera. Crack, like, 
that was the big shot and that's my little duck popped out so cute love it so I can put those away and then now just to decorate so I have got one and three eighths of an inch circle punch and some glimmer paper dazzling diamonds of course I've got my note tag punch if I bring back in the original so I've got the rose red to complement the duck pink pirouette do you know what I think that's blushing bride is it blushing? no it is pink pirouette huh. little brain went for a second then and I'm going to offset layer these so I want some snail down on the right hand side because that's where I'm going to offset it a little bit on the back of the glimmer in the centre I'm going to take some dimensionals on the back of little ducky little pink ducky very cute I think one's enough and push quite hard so that sticks down I'm going to have a medium crystal a uh, pearl and then finally I have already tied my bow the silver baker's twine because you know nobody wants to watch me faff around with bows for hours there we go bow on there and then a couple of dimensionals on the back grab my box put my bid back in obviously you don't have to just put um, bibs in the finished dimensions two by two by five inches or five by five by twelve and a half centimeters and offset that there and that is my cute baby bib box fold flat of course I hope you like it thank you very much for joining me and I hope to speak to you soon bye